We are just eight days away from the 2020 presidential election between Donald Trump and Joe Biden, but I thought that it would be a good idea to take a detour from that coverage really quick to address something else that's happened recently and that's also related to the election, which is that the left is now trying to cancel Chris Pratt for allegedly being a Trump supporter and for also being a Christian, which is actually worse than being a Trump supporter because it means that what defines you is actually a nightly opposition to much of the evil that is currently being propagated by the left. And so we will go over why they're all of a sudden taking issue with Chris Pratt, similar details coming from Matthew McConaughey, Hey, why Hollywood hates Christians, and despite that, how they use biblical themes to write their stories and make money. So do stay tuned. John Doyle in. Heck off, Tommy. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Heck Off Kami. We've got a lot of new people watching, which is very epic. Be sure to wish them all a very warm welcome in the comments. And I do actually want to give a shout out to one guy in particular. Someone sent me this clip taken by another channel called Barely Informed with Elad. He's a good guy. You should check him out. But I saw this clip and it got me pretty excited. So take a look. By the time I got into politics, it's like I'm already used to this. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, well, thank you so much for your time. Is there anything else you want to mention? Uh, Yo, go to heckoffcomedy.com, support John Doyle, he's epic, gonna be our future president. Let's go! Let's go! There's a few reasons why that's epic. Mainly because this guy's out here spreading the word, he's high energy, he's talking about something totally different, but he takes the opportunity to spread the word, so thank you my friend, I appreciate your endorsement. And also, as you may have noticed, uh, that guy is black. And the left will look at this and say, oh, he has one black guy in the audience, and so he has to make him the token minority, he has to make race an issue of politics. That's not the point. First off, because this guy just happened to be epic and shout out the channel during an interview, but also if I am making race an issue of politics, then that is only because they have made politics an issue of race. And what I mean by that is that if the left is accusing me or conservatives more broadly of using minorities to prove that our ideas are actually universally accepted, then that is only because they have spent decades and countless resources cementing politics within a racial identity, more specifically a non-white racial identity. In other words, if I am bringing race into politics, it's only because you have cemented politics into race. Displaying that our ideas are accepted across all groups, granted, inevitably in varying degrees is only necessary because they have fueled racial tensions and tribalism and exploited that for political gain by effectively consolidating the support of non-whites to fulfill their political agenda. And that's why they're scared of us. That's why they try to slander me. Oh, he's a Nazi. He's a white supremacist because they want me gone. So they use malicious and dishonest rhetoric as a weapon. I mean, I've got the receipts of them admitting to this in private correspondence, but they can get bent. Because the reality is that there are very few people who are as young as we are, who are growing as fast as we are, who are as smart as we are, who are completely independent and who have the influence that we do. And they're scared of us because we're correct and because we're authentic. No one's afraid of little Marco. No one's afraid of Jeb Bush. No one is afraid of conservative establishment figures because they know that they only exist. So voters feel as though there's opposition to the radical left. But in the end, we still get the forever wars. We still get hollowed out towns. We still get mass immigration. But they're afraid of us because we're building a coalition of people people who love America, love Jesus, and reject vice and embrace discipline. And that is dangerous. They might have control of the institutions and the media for the time being, but eventually they will be consumed by their own beast as the effects of their policies and propaganda further deteriorate the society. And when that happens, the boys are going to be there waiting, stoically, to make America great again. And at that point, the screen people cannot save them. The point being, there is great reason to be optimistic about the future, but also the impact that we're going to have on it specifically. But anyways, they're trying to cancel Chris Pratt because they suspect that he's a closet Trump supporter and because he goes to a church that is against gay people and transgender people, um, to which he replied that, no, that's obviously not true. His church is obviously not against anybody. All are welcome, which is true of all Christian churches. All are called and welcome to the church, regardless of their identity or behavior. But what the church will not do, or at least what it isn't supposed to do, is adjust its teachings to accommodate the social trends of the society, which I'm sure is what they were alluding to when they said that his church is against uh, gay and trans people. Since in 2020, if you don't publicly endorse something, it means that you're against it. And this is why Hollywood has such a large problem with Christianity as a whole. But before we get into that, we have to ask, is Chris Pratt a Trump supporter? Yes, definitely. How do I know that Chris Pratt is a Trump supporter? Because the guy's an absolute Chad, he messes with Jesus, and he played Star-Lord. Plus, he didn't take part in the Avengers cast fundraiser thing for Joe Biden, and then there was that time you wore a shirt with a Gadsden flag on it. But that information is even superfluous. I already know that he's a Trump supporter because of the aforementioned 
trifecta of masculine political indicators, Jesus, Chad, Star-Lord. No man with those criteria would ever be off put by a strong leader like President Trump, let alone whatever vote for someone like Joe Biden and the coalition of communism and estrogen that he represents. But he also donated money to Barack Obama's re-election campaign in 2012. I don't know if we can blame him for that. I mean, it wasn't really until after the 2012 election that things really accelerated into where we are now politically and socially. In fact, the 2012 Democrat Party is basically just the current Republican establishment. But the point is that Chris Pratt is what I would refer to as the Chad centrist. These are guys who aren't necessarily that interested in politics. They don't know the philosophical roots of different strains of left or right ideologies. They don't spend time analyzing trends, but objectively speaking, they're still roughly center right, AKA the traditional American man. Chris Pratt represents a time in American history where young men didn't have to study political strategy or philosophy, but instead could focus on life's simpler pleasures, riding motorcycles, fighting dinosaurs, courting women of color. That's a joke, but only because we never actually stopped fighting the lizards, did we boys? The point being that the climate in this country has become such that a guy like Chris Pratt Jesus Chad Star-Lord has to literally keep to himself that he's a Christian and more so that he isn't explicitly in favor of this militant woke progressivism because if you're not in favor of that, if you're not in alignment with that consensus, then your only option is to keep your mouth shut. And who knows for how long you'll even have that option. Remember, silence is violence. Eventually, you won't even be able to just play it close to the chest. You will have to join them or be totally exiled, just like the people who were foolish enough to think that they were allowed to add their opinion to the discussion, who are now blacklisted from Hollywood. And this pertains increasingly to Christianity because it's getting to a point where it's actually impossible to be both a Christian and a Democrat. Like the party is moving so radically left that you are going to have to choose between the teachings of Christ and the teachings of AOC. And I would be very careful with that. And that's why Matthew McConaughey came out recently on Joe Rogan and he said that uh, many of his Christian friends in Hollywood have had to hide their faith in order to keep a job or even refuse to clap when actors such as himself thank God during their award acceptance speeches. And it's interesting because Hollywood both despises Christianity while also relying on it to exist. Sounds weird. Bear with me for a second. But very simply put, decadence sells and Christianity preserves. Think about how short of a timeline on which we're operating, actually. Like 100 years or so? That's how long we've really had this celebrity culture. And it gets worse every decade. So what happens? We start making films. They're great. They're epic. They're masterpieces. They're artistic. Pretty soon, people just start making absurd amounts of money. Hollywood becomes extraordinarily wealthy. People go from just starring in a movie to all of a sudden being worshipped by the culture, being deified by the culture. So fast forward a few decades, and Hollywood increasingly embodies that ethos. It became increasingly corrupted by itself. And as Hollywood became characterized increasingly by wealth and pride, its ethos increasingly began to reflect that. And this hedonistic, live in the moment, if it feels good, do it, Hollywood culture is the result. All of the degeneracy in society, uh, the promotion of the most depraved acts and behaviors, most if not all of it can be traced back to Hollywood, largely because decadence sells and art is reflective of its creator. And the single greatest obstacle to that degeneracy is Christianity. The ethos of Christianity being antithetical to the ethos of Hollywood because Christianity emphasizes the eternal life, whereas Hollywood emphasizes the eternal present. We're here for a good time, not a long time, man. That whole attitude. This also highlights the difference between the two with regards uh, to discipline and deferring gratification. These types are much more impulsive, much more demanding. They have much less self-control because they're operating within the eternal present, whereas Christians have more discipline because we're operating within the opposite ethos. And this manifests for them throughout their, their lifestyles and what they promote publicly, be it sexual liberation through unrestricted abortion, hormones, sexualizing children, pornography, the breakdown of the family structure, all exactly opposite to the teachings of Christianity, along with their extravagant and decadent lifestyles fueled by their tremendous wealth. But then, conversely, they'll publicly endorse things like democratic socialism or social programs that they know they won't foot the bill for, but that you will. But it doesn't matter because it makes them feel virtuous. It fuels their ego. It fuels their pride. And all of this self-serving, this literally satanic behavior, by the way, all of this is antithetical to Christianity. And as long as Christianity exists, they will be reminded that what they're doing is wrong, what they're promoting is wrong, and that there is potential for the culture to outright reject it and make them obsolete. We are a reminder that we have free will and yet are capable of choosing good in the face of vice. And that makes them very angry because Christianity is the single greatest obstacle to the radical left. And to my atheist members of the audience, I would like you to take note of that because what happens if they decide that God-given rights don't actually exist or that we're not one nation under God. They'll decide that those notions are archaic and undemocratic and then your rights will be subject to vote as if the will of New York liberals dictates whether or not you have a right to defend yourself. Christianity puts emphasis on self-government, on true liberty, the family structure, free will, all of the things upon which this country was built. And if they can continue to turn people away from it, then we should not be surprised when that is reflected politically. 
As Andrew Breitbart said, politics is downstream from culture. But that being said, Hollywood also takes stories from the Bible to fuel itself. This machine runs on biblical themes. And that's not a coincidence. It is not a coincidence that the most popular stories the stories which resonate with us the most, the biggest blockbusters, all contain biblical themes. We're talking The Matrix, Star Wars, iRobot, Terminator, Planet of the Apes, literally every superhero movie. Yeah, sorry, Wojak, you're actually getting excited about a Christ figure. I mean, even Spider-Man 2, probably the greatest superhero movie of all time, having one of its most important sequences being an incredibly obvious yet figurative crucifixion. Peter. With great power comes great responsibility. Yes, yeah, sounds suspiciously like Luke 12, 48. For unto whom's ever much is given of him shall be much required. And to whom men have committed much of him, they will ask the more. That's just Jesus for, yo, you got bit by the spider. Now I have to fight the guy who got bit by the octopus computer. It's going to be epic pizza time, right? I mean, the point being that Hollywood acknowledges our affinity for biblical themes and stories, and it uses that to profit and then create work uh, that seeks to erode the Christian values of our society and promote the degradation of them through their platform, which is wrong, but it's also an acknowledgement that the affinity exists, which is to say that we should not allow them or their efforts to demoralize us or turn us away from what really matters, because even their framework and playbook acknowledges the acknowledged good of those values and the importance of them for preserving a prosperous, moral, stable, and just society. Hey guys, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, leave it a comment, subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications, it's a bell, you just give it a little da, da, and I'm thinking about Spider-Man, remember that? Oh, oh, talk about biblical themes, he's in the church, he's cleansing himself of darkness, the church bell, bro, fight me on that, Sam Raimi's Spider-Man trilogy is better than, like, any modern Spider-Man film, whether it be the the MCU or the Andrew Garfield, bro, Tobey Maguire, that's my Spider-Man. Uh, yeah, but turn on notifications and then share the video with a friend. Hey, hey, hope hope you didn't find that that declaration of my Spider-Man preference to be too off-putting. Maybe you'll still share it with a friend. Perhaps that'd be epic. But anyways, thank you so much for watching, and may God bless America.